everyone. This is Angela at Valley Girl Crafting, and I have a card that I have made that I wanted to share with you guys and do a short tutorial on it. I had uh, did a video with quilling the other day, and I have used that particular flower that I demonstrated how to quill on this particular card. And I wanted to kind of get together with you guys again, do another little tutorial on the quilling, um, because I don't see a lot of quilling on the YouTube channels that, that I've been watching. Um, I know there are people that quill out there, and there's people out there that can quill a whole lot better than I can. But I do enjoy it. It's very creative, and I just thought since I don't see a lot of this on the, um, the YouTube channels that... Um, you know, I'm subscribed to and some of the people that I think are subscribed to me, then I thought I would just kind of bring this new type of crafting over for everybody to, uh, you know, see if anybody wants to get into the, the quilling part of it. Um, now, this card and the card that I'm making um, for this video are different sizes. This one, I kept it, I wanted it more of a square card. And I was going to use a larger embossing folder, and then I changed my mind. So, I actually cut my card base down to the same measurements as my embossing folder. Um, so, this particular embossing folder is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. And then you will also need a single sheet. Uh, this particular one fits perfect on in the center of my embossing folder. So this one actually measures three by three inches. You will also need 10 quilling strips, a quilling tool or a quilling needle. Um, people call it different things. Just a little tool. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the glare, but there's a little slot in it and you use to roll your quilling paper up to make your petals and different designs. You will also need ink and markers of your choice um, for your coloring, distressing, whatever you want to do. And then um, you will need your embossing folder. Now you can do this without an embossing folder. I just thought it looked really cute and added some texture. So I really like cards and projects that have texture to them. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put my paper, I'd like again, so guys, I'm sorry, I, this is a new camera for me, and I am still having a little bit of issues with figuring out where I need to move to to get everything done. So, I'm going to go ahead and line this up to where that fits perfectly on the inside. And I'm going to go ahead and run it through my big shot over here. I've got it off camera uh, just because I don't have a whole lot of room. And big shot takes up a lot of space. So move some things around. The funny thing is I've tried, started this video three different times. And every time I do one of my dogs starts um, either barking or the puppy a little bit ago, um, my seven month old mini Schnauzer, he got a plastic grocery bag from somewhere and took off running through the house with it. So all you hear is the bag making all this noise. So I had to restart it yet again. So hopefully we'll get this video made. But there is my embossed paper, which I love that. It's just, it looks like, kind of like an, a quilt. It's just got all different kinds of shapes to it. But that does remind me of, of an old-fashioned quilt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ink up my card base. So um, I am a shabby sheet girl, so I love... Um, all sorts of 
turquoises and I like the lighter pinks. I'm not as big on the, you know, um, magenta or the um, things to, to that nature. I like more of a subtle pink, a powder pink or a whatever. But um, my favorite color in the world, of course, is turquoise. So I do tend to incorporate a lot of turquoise into my crafting. So whatever your favorite colors are, just go ahead and use that. I do want to get this pretty good on here. And, you know, on some of this stuff, you'll see that it may go on there. I think that just makes it look even better. Um, if you're a stickler and want to take more time in doing this, um, but for the sake of the video not running too awful long, um, I probably won't take as much time on this one as I did on the one I did off, off camera. Um, but anyways, I took a few of my alcohol markers. I took, um, this one is turquoise five. And I will take pink number 13. Let's incorporate a little purple. Um, I'll do violet number two. And we'll do a green number one. So these are the colors I'm going to use. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into each one of these different little squares. And I'm just going to add other colors to it just to brighten it up a little bit. So on, you know, this first stripe one, I'm going to go in every other stripe and just kind of pull this darker turquoise color right across and i'm not i'm going to skip every other one and that way you know save a little bit of time um but it also will give it a little contrasting color too um the next row i'm going to switch over to this one and i'm just going to run very lightly my marker these little dots stick up off the page so i'm just going to lightly run it over just to kind of pick those up so I don't have to dot each and every one of them. <clears throat> On the next one, I'll move over here. And I'm just going to touch every other dot and mix them up each row. Just to kind of give it a little something different. And again, to save some time. And then on the last one, um, I'll go back and do... <clears throat> maybe the two small ones on the edge this one on each side and maybe I'll do both of the ones in the middle just to kind of give it a different dimension so I'm done with the turquoise so let's go in with the pink um, <clears throat> let's do the X on this one we'll just run the pink marker right across there Well, that one I messed up, so I'll make it a little thicker, but. You know, these videos <clears throat> can sometimes run a little longer, so I'm just going to make all of these a little thicker. That way it kind of look like I just meant for it to happen, which that's the great thing about crafting. You can just change it up and do whatever you want. So on this one, I think I will get down to this one with the pink and I'm just gonna go two on every other lines here kind of mix them up a little bit and then do some lines in between the, the blue. Don't want to cover all my turquoise up since that's my favorite color anyway. <clears throat> of course the dog has a hold of a box now. So let's hope he's 
stays quiet with it. We'll see. Leave it alone, Bruno, okay? So I'm going to come back up here to this one. And we'll color some of these in purple. on this one. It's got a messed up a little bit, so we'll just make it look like I meant to make them that thick, just like the ones on the top. So, it's a great thing about crafting, is you can just make it your own, and you know, if you mess up a little bit, nobody has to know. I mean, some of the probably nicest crafting that we've seen you know could have somebody could have very well felt like they messed up on it okay so you can go ahead and decorate more on that if you want if you want to color in more of it but I just think that's kind of cute and I think I'll just end there uh, just for sake of time so next on my little three by three and that does cover pretty well so I'm just gonna go in with um, let's go in with this um, distress oxide fossil amber and that way I'll add a little kind of yellow there's no yellow on the other one so this will be a good way to pull some different colors in. And I'm just going in, and I'm not being careful at all. I am just letting it smack on there and just getting kind of a little bit all over. But I think that will make it pop. Also, I think I'll go in with the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Ink. And this is already brown, so I don't want to do too much. I mean, it is a totally different color brown. But I do want to just kind of hit on the corners a little bit just to give it that vintage look to it. Because it is a little darker. And... I did not bring any of my daubers or anything over here. So I think what I'll do is just take a piece of scrap paper, kind of wad it up a little bit, and put a little ink on it, and then we'll just kind of touch that and just give it that little bit of aged look on the inside of it get a little bit of different different look to it okay so I am going to go ahead and glue this down and I'm going to be using some double-sided tape on this so just run it all the way around it off. And I'm going to run just one piece across the middle. And then I will take. Got a bone, bone folder over, but I'll just use my fingers to burnish it. Just want to make sure that ink or that, um, that ink on the brain now. Just make sure that that double sided tape is stuck really good so that way when we go to pull it off, 
check all of our corners, make sure we have no nothing overhanging that will make this part sticky somewhere where we don't want it sticky and cause problems later on. Oops, part did not stick well. That's okay, we'll get it. And we'll pull this last piece out. Turn it over and I'm just going to look at all my edges. Just make sure I've got everything turned in. And then I'm just going to decide which way I want it to look. It's a little darker on the two corners up here. So I think I'm going to have that be the top. And I'm going to hold this up. So I can see. And when I feel like I've got it pretty centered. I'm just going to lay that down. And rub that on. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll make our petals for our flower. So this is where we will use our quilling paper. And if you didn't watch the last video with the quilling, this is a quilling needle or a quilling tool. It is a metal piece. It has a slit in the center of this little piece here. I don't know if you can, it's too much of a glare on, there it is. There's a little hole right there, you can see it. You want to take your quilling paper, um, and you want to bring that all the way to the end, and then you want to just start rolling it in. And if you've ever made the little roses that you roll in, you know, um, you can use a small dowel or a small straw or anything that you want, I guess. This just allows you to get it good and tight. And I just have better luck at it. To me, it's easier to use than the dowels and stuff. So once you get to the end, you just back it up very easily and pull it out. Then we're going to make squeeze it on the top and the bottom. Sorry guys, my puppy's got something else over there. And then once you get it rolled, I'm just going to lay it down, let it unfurl a little bit. And then I'm going to... No idea what he got, but... little glue on the edge of it and make sure everything's fairly even because we want our petals to be nice and we'll set that one over to the side so on this particular one I have one two three four five six seven petals so I will go ahead very quickly I'm gonna go ahead and just roll these up a little quickly so we can kind of get this going Every so often you can take and, you know, just make sure everything's fairly straight. You don't have to keep it perfect by any means, but you do want it to be uniform. Whoops. And if you're not careful, this is what will happen. So that piece there, I'll just, well, actually you can reuse it. You just straighten it out and start with this end. That's why you want to get right as close to the end as you can that way when you go to take it out it slips out just a little easier so and guys i apologize because with this paper being so little it is very hard for me to see it sometimes after working on a computer for eight hours a day sometimes the small stuff is hard to see so I'm just going to push that down. That one's a little bit smaller, but you know, I can use that for a leaf. So I've got to have some leaves on that too. So not too worried about that. We'll go ahead and glue that together. And let it sit. Sometimes it's like trying to thread a needle. 
Sometimes those little spaces just are more than my eyes can bear. Of course, the noise you heard there was the eight-year-old dog that we have. She's laying over here on the couch. She said, now she's going to become a little playful right in the middle of me trying to do a video. We have um, two dogs, a cat, and my son has a lizard. So, house full of animals. Each one of those, just keep them coming. And, you know, a lot of times when you're just sit, sitting around, you want to do something crafty, but you really won't, don't want to drag everything out. You don't want to really get, dive into a huge project of any kind. You can sit and do this while you're watching TV at night. Um, and all you got to do is just make a whole bunch of these circles. You can make them all different sizes. Um, you can make some smaller ones for some leaves or for some little tiny flowers. Um, you can also make some bigger ones. You know, you, you can make flowers as big as you want. And like I said, the things I'm doing is just basic because I haven't seen a lot of people doing the quilling. So I want to keep things kind of basic and give people a chance to, you know, try it out and see if it's something that they want to do. So I know this video is starting to go a little long, but I promise we'll get it wrapped up here before too long. I don't want to take up too much time. I do hope you're enjoying it though. Again, I apologize. Um, as of right now, I do not have a craft room. Um, I am working actually out of my living room. Um, so I have half of it set up as a craft room and the other half as a living room. So sometimes when the dogs decide they want to be a little loud, there's unfortunately not a whole lot I can do about it. And if I put them up in a room, then all they want to do is bark, and that doesn't help any either. So, this time they do pretty good, though. After you do a few of these, your fingers start getting a little bit gluey where they're, or sticky, where they get glue all over them. Let's keep rolling these. Like I said, this is a great little thing to do while you're kind of chilling out watching TV because once you get started in them, um, you know, you don't have to watch it every spin. You just have to look down every so often to make sure that you've got it at least somewhere close. So I'm trying to keep these about the same size. None of them, none of them are going to be perfect. You can buy these little tray things and I meant to get it out and show you guys. The next time I do quilling, I will make sure and get that out. Um, but it's just a little pad. It's got a cork board underneath it, and it's got these circles that are cut out in different shut, different um, circular sizes, and you can actually drop them in. It's just got a little plastic covering over the top of it. Um, you know, the you have the cork board underneath, and then the circles are cut out with the cork board showing. Um, but when you drop them down in there, they will only expand as large as the plastic circles that lay over top of the cork board allow them to. So that does help keep them a little more uniform. If you're doing something that you really need, that it's very important for you to have the exact same size, then, um, you know, that is definitely something you would want to use. Um, for the flowers though, like I said the other day in the tutorial that I did, you know, flowers, petals aren't the same size on flowers, so I don't really worry about it on just something simple like this. Now, if you're doing a very intricate flower, you know, sometimes it can be a little more important to have all the pieces the same size. So, um, Anyways, I hope um, some of you guys do try the quilling. Um, you can get this little quilling tool I've got here is 
is really a very inexpensive tool. I think it was just a couple of bucks. Um, you can buy the quilling paper already cut. Um, you know, I'd just get a small pack to try to see if it's something that you, you know, could see yourself getting into. And then once you get a little bigger, um, decide you, you know, want to get into it a little bit and you decide you want to get a little bigger quality, quantity of your um, strips, you can actually buy a mini paper shredder that actually shreds the paper, that's what I'm using here, into the perfect quilling size. And I got mine off of Amazon. Um, can't remember now how much it was. It was less than $10 with shipping and everything. And you'll spend that much on quilling paper just to get all the different colors. Um, and if you buy, you know, like everybody has the um, colored paper, uh, you want to get like a medium quality. You don't want it to be real thin, but you don't want it to be super thick. And we all have that stuff laying around, especially if you make any type of cards or something. Um, you can use that and cut your own strips, and that saves a ton of money on your quilling supplies. Um, you can use any type of glue. I mean, you can use Elmer's glue. Anything. Um, you know, if you're going to be using it, of course, with photos, then you want to make sure that you're using, you know, products that are non-toxic so it doesn't bother any photos if you decide to put photos in something. Um, but yeah, you can do the quilling, you can do it with scrapbooking, you can do it on any type of crafts, um, cards, um, anything. I mean, you can make boxes and use, sorry about that guys, I keep moving the wrong way, um, and use this as, you know, decorations. So, there is a lot of possibilities. Okay, so that was the last one that I've got for the actual rose, or the flower. Um, and again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That will lead me one for a leaf, a leaf, and a heart. And then we'll do the rest of them um, here in just a minute. So, when we're doing our, our flower, again, if you watched the other night, I like to find where I glued it. Just find the little seam right there. And I like to push my fingers right there against that seam. And that is where I like to squeeze it to make my petal. That way it keeps that seam um, hidden. And also when we glue these together, it will give it an extra... Um, hold on that piece so that it doesn't, oh, there's my strip, my seam, so it, you know, you're going to glue them together, so it'll just give it a little extra, um, hold there for you. So, like I said, this is, these are just very simple, they're very basic shapes to make your flowers, it's just one of the, one of the easier ones to start off with. I mean, you can make all sorts of animals. You can make fish and um, octopus. You can make any type of animal. Um, you can make all sorts of stuff. If you, you know, like I said the other day, if you want to start getting into maybe some different shapes, find a picture on Pinterest or something that's got different shapes on it and then try to mimic your shape of your pieces to that to to fill that in and just glue it on top of that on top of the picture and use that as your guide so i'm going to go ahead and do the leaf and this time i think i'm going to pinch it on that side and then I'm going to come over and I'm also going to pinch it on the other side. And just kind of like make a little leaf out of it. And then I think I'll 
just make a few extra little little leaves to go on this one now before I put them together I want to take a scrap piece of paper and I'm going to make sure that all my petals I'm going to stamp them with a white. I had my white out here a minute ago. There it is. It fell down in there. I'm going to use a white pigment just to kind of give it a little contrast to the white that's showing on the side because there is some stripes on this paper. So you do see some color bleed through, but this will kind of make it stand out when it is up against that brown, which is what I did with that one. And then I'm going to take a moss green, and I'm going to do that with the same thing with um, these leaves, just to give that top a little bit of a green color. That side's prettier. I think I'll do that. And you know, on these, you don't have to do the whole thing green if you want to leave some of it speckled white or whatever. Um, I'm going to get just a little bit of green, and then I will need a little bit extra to find the one that's already green. And it's got a green stripe on it. So I'm going to measure from about right there to the bottom of that card. And then I'm going to come in with my scissors. And I'm just going to trim that off. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. I'm going to follow this little line on my embossing, and that way I've got my little stem on there. And now that my pigment is dry, I'm going to start putting my flower together. So we just take a little glue, we put them on the bottom points inside and we just make a little heart and then we're going to come in we're going to add a little more glue and bring another piece and we're just going to stick that together and we'll hold it for just a moment and let that And now we have three of them. Which in itself, you know, you could do some small ones and make a whole bunch of little three-petaled flowers. But I'm going to go ahead and just keep going with how we're doing. Can figure out how my camera works again. Now we have four of them. As I also talked about, you can make some beautiful butterflies with just four of these. And if you took the center one out that I'm holding, um, you can make some really, really pretty butterflies. You can also take several different colors, and you can do little strips and glue them together and have like a purple, a pink, a yellow, a green, whatever. And then as you're rolling it, 
it changes all those colors. So when you have this inside, you can actually have different colors like a, like a wheel um, inside. And that's very pretty too. Um, and so there's just so many endless possibilities that you can have when you're quilling. And the last one we just put in there, I'm going to hold it for just a minute. And I'm going to squeeze that one just a little bit more. Okay. Then I'm going to take my smallest leaf. I'm going to put a little glue on both sides. And I'm just going to take him and I'm just going to tuck him right up in between those two. Do the same thing on one of these other ones. And then just tuck him right in there. Just hold him for just a minute. And as you see, we're having some really good luck with this. It's looking very pretty. And then I'm going to stick one more in right there. So now we have our little cord flower with our leaves. And we are going to add it onto the front of our card. We just need to figure out where we want it to, to go. And you know, I think I'm going to take that off there. I don't like that one there. I'm going to move it, leave it for another one. I'll put that right like that. I like the way that looks. We've got one down and one out, so that covers all the bases. Um, just going to add some glue on the back of each one of these. It really doesn't take a whole lot. Just lay it down, find the way you want it, move it around, and then press it down. And uh, this is art glitter glue in this, so it does dry clear. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. I just kept losing it, so I just changed the color of the bottle completely. Um, put some beads on my little stainless steel needle that goes with it. And that way I can keep up with everything. Okay, now um, if you don't want to do anything else, you can add... Um, these quilled leaves um, and you don't have to lay this one down flat you can actually if you wanted to to give it the same dimension you can put it in like that so it stands up and then that way your leaves kind of touch it and just attach to it but for this one I just wanted to make it flat so I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the back of this one and that right here where the single sheet comes in I think I'll add that leaf So, let's go in and create this little one. So, don't need a real big piece. We'll just take that and tear that one. And torn side and toward the middle. So, we're going to curl in about four times. Back up, pull out. So, you have that little teeny tiny roll there. Then we're going to come in about right here so we're going 
to start rolling it back onto itself. Okay, and just kind of creating that backwards roll. So now you're going to have something that looks like that. Then we're going to come down to the very bottom. And we're going to start rolling everything just normal like what you would roll everything out. I'm going to take it out. Whoops. And this is what you're going to have. Kind of looks like a little snail. <laughs> we're just going to take a little glue and we're just going to glue all this together. We're going to glue the two small ones at the top together. And then we're going to take the bigger one on the bottom and we're going to glue it to the one beside it. And we're just going to glue them one on top of the other one. So there you have that one. And the other piece that we tore off, we're going to fold it. And we don't want them to be even, okay? We want one to be shorter than the other one. So now we're going to go to the longer one and we're going to roll it backwards instead of we're going to roll everything down. Okay, so we're going to have like a V with a little quill circle on it. Then the other side, we're going to do the same thing and we're going to roll it the other way. And this one you just want to roll once or twice because it's shorter. So you're going to end up with like a V that's got two little quilling pieces on each side. And I'm going to put just a drop of glue in the middle. And then I'm going to put my finger down in there and I'm just going to kind of push it apart a little bit. So I'm going to come in right here on beside this little leaf. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it. And I'm going to attach. Let's come in a little bit more. And we'll fold it around a little bit. Just put a dot of glue on the paper where you want it. And then you just stick that curly cue you made right down on there and it'll hold it. Put a little more glue on the bottom. I'm going to twist that around. I didn't put enough glue on there. Sometimes you try to use less but every now and again that doesn't work. So we're just like I said doing glue. We're wrapping it around that small leaf down here and that way when you do when you have it it looks like that and then I'm going to take this small one and I'm going to put a little glue on the back of each one and last time I put the small one at the top the small little loop this time I'm going to put it at the bottom and have the bigger one at the top And then I'm going to take one of my markers. Um, this one, let's take a pink one. And just on the top pieces of the twirled paper, I'm just going to make it pink. And then I'm going to take a different colored green. I'm going to use a little brighter green. And I'm going to add it 
and the top of the smaller swirls. So that way we get a little bit of color on the flowers. And you know, just for the heart in the center, this one I think is going to be too big, so I'm just going to go ahead and make another one real quick. And you know, it doesn't have to be a heart. It can be another circle. It can be a diamond. It can be a square. You can make these little pieces of paper into anything. I'm just going to take it in and tear it off there. And don't want to let this one unfurl a lot at all. We want to keep it kind of compact there. I'm going to show you on this bigger one where we have the bottom here you just take and push the top down and pull it up and then you just kind of push on it till you get the heart shape you want and and I just think that one's a little bit too big. I like the smaller one. So let's see if we can't make this one into a heart. And this one may actually be too small. But we'll try and see. And actually I think I'll use my scissors just to kind of push down in there. Get the bend going, and then I'm going to take I'll take a pretty dark red this time, and color the tops here. Of my heart, and that will go right there in the middle. So we'll glue that down. And then on the original one, I have high. On this one, I've laid out the word thanks that has been previously cut out with a die. Just to save a little extra time. Um, this one's pink. I think I want to still keep it blue, I mean black. I just think the contrast of all the lighter colors and then having that black. So I'm going to get my little Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm just going to press down until it kind of covers really nice. a couple of times. It doesn't take a whole lot. Um, anybody that uses this knows this is amazing ink and it is a must-have. I actually just got that one recently. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add to a little bit of this word where it is so dainty. It is kind of hard so we'll just do a lot of little dots and then I'm just going to take and rub my finger over it and just kind of get it all over. Now we got to figure out where we want to put it. So the high fit really good right there on this one. Thinking about maybe putting the thanks It's just across the bottom right here in the corner. I think that would look really nice. So we'll oops. It does kind of lay a little wonky. That's okay. And of course it will dry clear with the art glitter glue. 
then, you know, you can add a couple more little things up there if you wanted to. Um, you could even bring out a few more vines or whatever you want to do. Um, on this one, if you want to add a little something extra. So if I have any of my pins over here. Um, but you could just do maybe a white stitching. Um, just where it does, you know, you can see around it. That would be really cute on that. Um, black stitching would pull the black for this. But that is the quilt card for the flower. And I usually just leave mine blank on the inside. Um, because I really like to write a personal, um, gesture inside of each of the cards. Um, so I just think that just makes it a little more from me. Um, nothing against having, you know, the, um, quotes on the inside of the cards. I think they're beautiful. I love them. Uh, for me, one thing, it saves money. I don't have to buy the quotes to put on the insides of the cards. Um, not to say that I won't in the future, but right now, it's just not really worth it for me for the money. There's other things that I would rather have. But there you have two different cards, same background, same style of flowers, hearts, and everything, but it gives you two different styles. And that is that is my card, guys. Uh, please don't forget to hit the like um, button on the video. Please, if you have not already, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you'll be notified on any new videos I make. I'm going to try to, to keep going with these videos and just keep putting them out there. So as long as you guys will watch them, I'll keep putting them out there and hopefully you'll get something out of them. Um, and I will keep watching your all's videos too. Um, but anyways, that is all I have for tonight. So until we meet again, sending you crafty hugs. Um, thank you guys and have a great night.